all this rest. I'm so glad you came. Jesus is preparing heaven for us. That sounds awesome. But wait, Jesus is in heaven? Yes, and more on that in a minute. Over the last few weeks, we have been using this Bible cube to help us learn about and remember how the Bible can be organized into six main ideas or categories. It gives us a really big picture of God's true story from the first book of the Bible in Genesis to the very last book of the Bible, Revelation. See, one, God created everything. Two, people disobeyed God. Three, God chose a special people. Four, God sent Jesus to save us. Five, Jesus began the church. And six, Jesus is preparing heaven for us. A couple of weeks ago, we learned all about how God sent Jesus to save us by being the perfect sacrifice. Jesus died on the cross for our sin, all the wrong things we do that disobey God. And then he came back to life, which proved his power over sin and death. And when Jesus did that, he made a way for all of us to be saved from the punishment we deserve for our sin. And I'm personally super grateful for that. And today we're going to explore what it means that Jesus is preparing heaven for us. Well, after Jesus resurrected, when he came back to life, he stayed on the earth around 40 more days. And during that time, he appeared to his disciples and gave them very important instructions. And then Jesus went back up to heaven. And the way the Bible describes the event, it must have been super incredible to see. Listen to this. And when he had said these things, as they were looking on, he was lifted up and a cloud took him out of their sight. And while they were gazing into heaven as he went, behold, two men stood by them in white robes and said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? This Jesus, who was taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. So, where did Jesus go when he was taken up into the cloud? Heaven. But what is heaven? Where is heaven? And what does heaven look like? Let's see if these kids know. There's gonna be like stuff in heaven. The stuff that's in the world. Even in Texas, even in California. I would have a zip line. Cause then I can like get like a paper towel and then jump on it and then it would hold on and then I can like swing down it. I will wear sparkly stuff in heaven. A pretty dress. TVs. I think there's gonna be every food on earth in heaven. Bread and not cereal. Bread and juice and fruit? Like watermelon, maybe some strawberries. French fries. There's not McDonald's in heaven. We won't even think about getting hungry. You don't have to go to the grocery store at all. Just heaven has it all. We'll never get cold or sick or hungry or anything. We'll just be happy. I'm not going to fall down in heaven. I only got it, Allie. I left all over my foot. It'll be okay. In heaven! And I really miss God. That's the last thing I can tell you about heaven. Well, I'm not so sure those kids have any idea of what heaven will really be like. But let's try something. Hey Siri. Hello there. Give me directions to heaven. Getting directions to heaven's best carpet cleaning. Uh, no, definitely not. While I'm sure Siri could help me find the best business to clean my carpets, it seems like even Siri can't help me get to heaven. And don't waste your time checking Google Maps either. We can't get to heaven by following a map or using GPS. But check this out. This is one of the amazing things that Jesus told his disciples while he was having his last supper with them before he was arrested and hung on a cross. 
Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again, and I will take you to myself, that where I am you may be also, and you know the way to where I am going. That's John chapter 14, verses 1 through 4. When Jesus spoke about his Father's house, he was speaking about heaven. When he told the disciples that he himself was going to prepare it for them, he was also saying the same thing to anyone who has made Jesus the leader of their life. Now, let's see if we can answer those questions about heaven. The best source for truth and the answers to questions about heaven is the Bible, because it's God's Word. Let's start at the end. Revelation is the last book of the Bible, and it contains information that God showed to John in a vision. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven. I heard a loud shout from the throne saying, Look, God's home is now among his people. He will live with them, and they will be his people. God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes, and there will be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain. All these things are gone forever. Okay, so in heaven, there is no pain and no suffering. There will be no reason to cry in sadness. That sounds fantastic, but there's even more. Heaven, also called the New Jerusalem, will have walls of gold and precious jewels, streets of the purest gold and gates made out of pearl. And there will be no need for sun or moon or any other sources of light because God's glory will provide all the light that we need. And the Lamb of God, Jesus, is the light and nothing evil will be allowed into heaven. So no sin. Isn't that incredible? No sin. And that's why only those who have their names written in the Lamb's book of life will be allowed to live in heaven. Only the names of God's children are written in that book. So maybe you're wondering how you can get your name into that book. Well, anyone who asks God to forgive them of their sin and chooses Jesus with their life to follow him will have their name written in that book. And because God's forgiveness removes the penalty of sin from your life, that evil will no longer keep you from entering heaven. I don't even think that there's a dictionary to describe how impressive the new Jerusalem will be. So you know what? I'm just going to pick up, pick a pretty great made up word. And I'll use my very enthusiastic voice. Heaven sounds amazing cryptastic! Woo! Jesus is preparing heaven for us. And now we know a little bit more about what it will be like when we get there. Jesus is in heaven right now. And part of Jesus preparing heaven was when he shed his blood on the cross for us. He made a way for us to be forgiven by paying the price for our sin. And if we choose to make Jesus the leader of our life, we'll get to live in heaven with him one day. So Jesus did return to heaven. But one day he is coming back for all of us who have made the choice to follow him. Our memory verse reminds us of that fact. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. Again, that's John 14, 3. One day, Jesus will come back and defeat evil once and for all. And then all of those who are his followers will be able to live with him forever in heaven, the new Jerusalem. I can't wait to get there. See you guys.